Hi, in this quick video I'll be showing you how to create a new mobile user on the NSX 1000. This video won't be a how to use the app because it'll be a long video. This is just how to set up a new user. You might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss when I release the new video on how to use the app. So smash that like button and let's get started. I'll be assuming that your Panda dealer has given you the credentials for your system and you know the IP address for the system as well. They would have given you installer level access or sub admin access. If you've only got admin access, you won't be able to do what I'm about to show you as some features will be disabled. So make sure you at least have sub admin access. Now this is only exclusive to the NSX um, at the time of making this video. So if you have a NS system, you'll have to make sure your admin account has the correct permissions from your dealer in order to make these changes. So now that we're in, the home icon takes you to this page, just so you know. So the icon that we're after is that gear icon to enter the system programming. Once you're in the system programming area, on the left hand side, click on PBX configuration. Then click configuration and slot. So there are two ways to go where we want to go. So you can either click on the top tabs of the different card areas. So click on SIP extension 128 and then port property. Or you can hover up the top where it says IP uh, registration and then select uh, standard SIP phone. The IPPT area, that's for the Panasonic proprietary handsets or proprietary soft phone. The standard SIP phone are for the third party SIP extensions or for the Panasonic mobile apps. So that's where we're going to concentrate today. So once you're in there, you might notice there are existing entries in there. So what you need to look for is a blank row. So where the extension number is blank and the SIP phone type is blank and the current IP address area is blank. If all three of them are blank, that means it's a free port. If only the extension number is blank, that means the user end was deleted up in the user area. Um, so it also deletes the extension port. All you've got to do is re-enter it in there and the mobile app will be ready again. Reason I refer to mobile app is because as far as I'm concerned, it only happens with a mobile app extension. If I'm wrong and you know it happens with third party extensions as well, just comment to below and let us all know. So as you scroll down under the SIP phone type column, you'll notice that it has mobile cell phone and other. Other refers to third party SIP extensions like an ATA or an IP extension like a Polycom or a Yearlink. Mobile cell phone refers to the Panasonic mobile app. So we'll choose a free row, in this case 28. So click on where it says fault under connection and put the port in out of service mode, OUS. If you don't put the port into out of service mode, you can't do any changes. So as you can see, I'm trying to click edit and I can't change that port that's still in service. So once you've put it into out of service, you give it an extension. So let's give it 1200. Click on edit under password and we'll give it a password of 12345678 zero and re-enter the password then click OK and then down the bottom click apply and put the port back in service INS under the connection column and you'll notice it locks the extension again so you can't make any more changes to it and if you do need to make more changes to it you've got to put it back into OUS mode now we'll head over to the users area and create a new user for this extension as you may know, on the NSX, you have to create a user and assign it to an extension. You can't just create an extension and assign it to a phone and expect it to work. It has to have a user profile. With the icons at the bottom left hand corner, you can use to add, delete, edit users, even add multiple users. We will be clicking on add user. You can even use the buttons at the top of the page as well. So remember this user is for the mobile account. Uh, Panasonic mobile app account sorry so just name it accordingly to whatever you want the extension number remember we made it 1200 so you got to associate it with the account and it'll automatically tie it together so then it'll work if you don't 
associate a user account. Remember, it won't work without a user account. So the password for this is the online portal password for each user, which hardly anyone uses. The next set of password is the voicemail password and the extension user password um, for any extension features that you need to activate. The next field you need to worry about is the type of user this account is going to be. So on this particular system, we leave them as advanced because they've got all the licenses unlocked. Um, but usually you would go normal, mobile or advanced. I will go into further detail on what all three mean when I create the video on how to set up the NSX. So you may want to consider subscribing so you don't miss that video. And don't forget to smash that like button guys, it really helps me out. Alright, so once you've filled out the first tab, you go up the top to the second tab. And you should see the extension number 1200 which you've assigned in the first tab. Okay. So you won't see any IP address there because you haven't registered it yet, so don't worry about that. Under the Telephony Feature tab, that's where you set the call forwards for that extension. Under the Contact tab, that's where you set the personal details for that user. So you fill out their DID, their mobile number and their email address. And this will allow them to get their voicemail to email set up as well. So they will get their missed call notifications if you turn that on. Alright, so now we're done with that user, so we go down the bottom, hit OK. And that takes us back to the user container area with everyone else. So you see the activate user icon up the top. The next bit is to go into that area because we've got to assign a license to that user we've just created. If we don't do this, then we can't use the user. We can register, but it won't allow us to make a phone call. So we'll search for the new user, 1200. You will notice in the current user column, it says none, meaning that there's no license assigned to it at the moment. So type of user, you can select from the three options. For this scenario, you could go normal because it's just going to be a primary user anyway. But on this system, everyone's going to be on advanced just because they've got the full system unlocked. So there's no point putting it on normal. If you do want to activate more than one user at the same time, you can by all means do that. So if I just bring up a few more extensions, Yep, and with the boxes on the left hand side, you can just tick as many as you need. You will notice in the ones that are already existing, on the type of user column, you can't change them because they're set to advanced, which is the highest level. If they're set to normal, then you can move them to the highest level, which is advanced. But if you need to downgrade them from advanced user to normal or mobile users, you have to delete the user and then reactivate, uh, sorry, recreate them and then reactivate it with the license. All right, so now that we're happy with the extension we're gonna activate, you click activate and then continue. And you should get this user AK activated successfully pop up. If you have no licenses, it'll obviously say unsuccessful. All right, now it's time to configure the mobile apps. If you haven't already done so, go to your Play Store or Apple Store and search for Panasonic mobile soft phone. And you'll see that icon and download that. Once it's downloaded, at the bottom you'll see a settings icon. Click on that and then click SIP settings. SIP username will be the extension we created, which was 1200. And the password we entered in there, which was 12345678. As for the rest of the fields, you should have got a generic guide from your PBX maintainer showing you what to enter in there, as there are specific values for each site. If you're getting value out of this video, just smash that like button. I'll just continue on entering the details for my system here. I won't fast forward it because I'm sure you're following along as well. Otherwise, you can just skip ahead. Once you've entered all the details, just confirm they are all correct and then hit back. This will save the profile and begin the registration process. Sometimes, especially if you're programming this remotely, the registration will fail the first time. And press OK on that warning to make it go away. So if you look at the NPR ID field down the bottom and it's set to dashes, that's a good sign that the phone hasn't been able to reach the registration server. So if you click on the red dot up the top 
right next to the top left sorry next to the um, extension number that should force it to re-register and usually that works if all your credentials are correct so you should now see a green dot meaning it's registered so I've just clicked on the dial option down the bottom so this is your dial pad where you can start making calls if you wish now remember this is an extension of the phone system so to make a phone call you have to dial 0 and then the phone number or you can dial the extension numbers as if you're internal and other users can dial you as well or intercom you as if you're internal even if you're working from home so just treat this as an internal extension now there is an option for the app to insert a zero for you when you dial a number so you don't have to dial zero and then the number you can just dial the number and the app adds it in for you so if you go down the bottom go to settings then number modifications and then under the trunk access number that's usually blank sorry so you'll see that like that and you just add a zero there um, and that tells the app to add a zero to whatever number you called as long as it's less than six digits as per the option up the very top so just regarding that option up the very top minimum digits of trunk calls if you dial in a number that's less than six digits which i'm sure your extensions will be it'll treat it as an internal call all right now that we're done here just click back now the icons at the bottom of the screen dial favorites contacts call logs they're all pretty self-explanatory but I will be making a separate video on the favorites bit because that does have a little trick to it. So the next bit is to create the mobile app as a secondary extension to a desk phone. So if you're happy with the mobile app being a primary extension, then you don't need to keep watching anymore. But uh, if you want to make the extension a secondary extension, then keep watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Now we'll move back over to the phone system. We have to go into the user area and delete the user that we've got for the mobile app. But before we do that, I'll just search the list to see if there's a free extension with no sub device attached so I can assign my mobile app to it. All right, so we found interview room extension 242. That one is in location 42 and it's got no sub device attached to it. So it's got no secondary phone whether it's a dict phone or a mobile phone. So now I want to assign my mobile app as a secondary attached phone to this interview room phone. So extension 242. So I look for my extension, look for my user actually, user extension and delete it because we no longer want it to be a primary extension. All right, and once this eventually deletes it, okay, done. We search for our extension 242 again. That's going to be our primary extension. Edit. Almost there. Okay, now up the top in the device settings tab, under sub device, you put the extension number of our mobile app in there. So that's going to be used to associate our mobile app with the extension 242 so when people dial 242 it'll ring both the 242 extension and the mobile app at the same time now just a side note once you associate a secondary device in this case extension 1200 to a primary device 242 nobody will be able to dial 1200 anymore that becomes obsolete so you only use extension 1200 to register the mobile app if someone wants to call the mobile app they have to dial 242 because that's the primary device, meaning it'll ring on their handset and their mobile app. It gives them the flexibility of not being at their desk as well. Now, before we go any further, I just want to bring the mobile app back. I just want to show you a little trap that I fell into as well. So when you delete the user, it actually deletes the um, username from the extension credential for the mobile app itself. Under the standard SIP phone location, which is where we're going to go to next. So by deleting the username of the app, that, that will mean that the app can no longer log in, which could be an advantage because if a staff member leaves, you just need to delete the user account and they can no longer use the app. So now if we go back onto the app to do a test, as you can see, the icon is green on the top left. So that means the app is still registered from the previous session. So we need to force it to re-register. So if we go into SIP settings, no need to change anything, just hit back. 
and this will force the app to re-register and you'll get the registration failure message. It's important for you guys to know these little things because if your staff are saying that they can't get registration, it keeps coming up with an error, it's uh, most likely that you are missing the next step that we're going to go into. It's just good to know that if you change one thing on the system, it could impact another. All right, so now on the left hand side, we go to PBX configuration, configuration, and then slot. If you're getting value out of this video, just smash that like button. Now on the top right, you hover over IP phone registration and then click on standard SIP phone. Now this takes you back to where we were at the start. Now you need to know the location number of the extension where it used to be. In the one that we configured at the start of the video, it was 28. So see how it's blank? The extension number is blank. So you've got to put it out of service and then you've got to give it the extension again, 1200. Once you apply that, you put the port back in service, INS. Now you'll be able to register the app again. All we do now is press OK on that error and this will cause the phone to try and register again. And eventually, it'll go green, hopefully. All right, that's ready to go. So now if someone wants to ring the mobile app, they have to ring 242, which is the number of the desk phone or the primary phone in this group. So 1200 is no longer an existing extension number. It's only to um, register the mobile app. So if you want to extract 1200 again, you have to go back into the um, user agent and delete the 1200 from the second device location. So basically undoing what we just did just now. And then you've got to go back into here, virtual SIP extension, and re-enter the SIP username for that extension you've just deleted under the users area. Because remember, it always deletes it and you've got to come back in here and put the username again. So one more thing before we finish off, just something I did miss at the start where I was configuring the um, app initially. Um, if you're going to have these handsets remote, so working outside of your office, you've got to make sure they're set for remote. So up the top where it says location slash P2P, you got to go in there and under phone location, you got to set it to remote plus local. And then the next column has to be set to Panasonic SIP phone if it is going to be used with an app or you set it to no if it's going to be used as a third party device like you've got a Yealink handset or an ATA that you're going to connect like a non Panasonic handset basically. Yeah, sorry about that. I just realized once I'd done the recording and obviously it was too late to go back and redo the whole thing. So hopefully you guys pick this up. All right, so once you've hit OK to get out of that, up the very top, hit the floppy disk to save the running config. Just in case there is a power outage and, you know, you lose all your config that you've just done. So once that finishes saving, up the very top, click the logout button. Always remember to log out, guys. Don't leave the system logged in. Don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, really helps me out. I'm also releasing a lot of how-to tutorials, so it might be a good idea to smash that subscribe button as well. 